sight, O oh God. Amen. Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you. I find as I look around and observe myself and my fellow humans that we are a curious bunch, we are a beautiful bunch, we are a perplexing and infuriating uh, bunch of people. Uh, and I say that because I see my own behavior, I see others' behaviors, and sometimes I just shake my head. One thing that I think we humans do uh, is that we, if we experience something over and over and over, we tend to just get tired of it. No matter how beautiful, no matter how mystical, no matter how fantastic, if we see it often, we tend to like dismiss it or get tired of it and we no longer see it as beautiful, fantastical or impressive. So one example of this is I heard a comedian interviewed once and he talked about taking a flight like 10 or 12 years ago. And he was in the plane and at the, at the beginning of the flight, the captain came on and he said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard this flight. This is actually a historic flight because the, for the first time in our airline's history, we're gonna offer you in-flight Wi-Fi internet access. And everyone's like, oh, wow. He said, you know, it's still in the testing period, but we are the very first flight in our airline's history to offer this to our passengers. And everyone, oh, this is impressive. Well, of course, halfway through the flight, uh, the captain comes back on. He said, I'm sorry, we're experiencing technical difficulties and the Wi-Fi internet is no longer working. So we're just gonna turn that off for the rest of the flight. And the guy next to him just kind of audibly said, this is ridiculous. Uh, and the comedian just had to laugh because he was like, humans went, it took us an hour and a half to go from, wow, we're the first people in this airline's history to experience this to like entitled whining and complaining because it didn't work right. And he was kind of saying, we're sitting in a chair in a metal tube flying 600 miles an hour, 35,000 feet off the ground. This whole thing is crazy, impressive, beautiful, and majestic. Uh, and yet when things don't work perfectly, even when it's brand new, we kind of get whiny and entitled and, and uh, full of righteous anger, right? And I think, it takes intentionality to try and see the wonder in something that feels more and more mundane. It takes intentionality to see the beauty in the world around us because for whatever reason, we just get tired of it if we've seen it over and over and over. Another interesting quirk of humans, and maybe this is just me, but uh, I think I've observed it in others, is sometimes when we do something, we feel we can tr cross it off the list and then we never have to worry about it again. An example in my own life is like 10 or 12 years ago, I ran a marathon and it was very painful and I did it and I crossed that off the list. And I have never been more out of shape than I was six months after running a marathon. And I think at first I was like, well, that was painful, I need to recover. You know, for a good three or four weeks, that excuse was valid. And then I kept thinking, well, I don't need to go back to running. After all, I ran a marathon. Obviously, I'm in shape. Obviously, I'm fit. You know, and then months keep going on, and I'm able to convince myself, well, I did that. I, I was fit and in shape. I ran 26.2 miles. Obviously, I'm good to go. And then six months go by, and finally, I was like, I'm out of shape and I am not fit. <laughs> Even though I was able to cross that off the list, uh, life takes continual work. And I had to shake myself out of that mental way of thinking that, oh, I did this once, so I crossed that off. And it's like, no, no, no. Life takes continual intentionality. And uh, we have to keep growing and being, uh, developing good habits. And it's a constant thing in our lives. It's not just that I cross that off the list and I'm good and done. And I read this great quote that said, uh, the opposite of growth is not stagnation. The opposite of growth is decay and death. And that sounds kind of morbid, but it highlights for me our need to constantly being intentional and vigilant in developing good habits, good practices, um, and good uh, intentional ways of being. Now I've been preaching from Exodus for a few weeks 
And this week we have, last week the people complained against Moses and God because they were hungry for food. This week they followed God and Moses and been led to camp in a land that is dry. It's a dry land and they're thirsty for water. And so once again, they complain against Moses and against God. And I feel like in my youth, I would have read this passage and kind of been like, man, these Israelites are a bunch of whiners. They just keep complaining. But now I look at it and I'm like, they didn't have any water. This is a basic necessity for life. And God intention, they followed God and God led them to camping in a dry land. And so their complaints and their request for water seems incredibly valid. And they're in a dry land and they're thirsty and they come to God, they come to Moses, Moses goes to God and God says, all right, lead the elders to this rock and I will be present atop the rock and bring Moses and Moses needs to bring the staff that has been with him all these years uh, as he was, you know, confronting Pharaoh and all of the plagues that came when he, he lifted up the staff over the Red Sea and parted the waters. Now he needs that same staff and he brings all the elders in the presence of God and he strikes the rock and water gushes forth. Now, God, I think, arranges these things intentionally And again, I think God is trying to use this experience in the desert to form the people as the chosen people of God. So God is bringing them intentionally to a dry land to teach them, when you are thirsty, come to God. When you are thirsty and you need basic sustenance, be a people that brings that request to God. Be a people that's constantly coming to God to quench your thirst. It is a habit. It is a practice. It is a way of being. It's not like they could come to God once, cross it off the list and be like, all right, I got that figured out. Now I can just go do whatever I want. God is having them camp in a dry land to teach them to be constantly relying upon God, a habit, a formation. It's a way of being. And we can learn from this, right? We live in a dry land. I remember uh, before becoming a priest, going to church one Sunday morning and uh, being the type of person I am, I thought, so why do I keep coming to church every Sunday? Why do I keep coming back? Not in a form of frustration, but like an intellectual exercise. And I kind of thought, I'm back here because I didn't get it right this week. I'm back here because I tried to love God and love my neighbor. And there were a lot of times when I failed to do that. And so I'm gathering with my people, my brothers and sisters in Christ, faithfully worshiping God and trying to be empowered to get it right again. And I realized in that moment, I'm going to need to do this for the rest of my life. Now I'm a priest, so it's a guarantee that I'll be here every Sunday. But if I wasn't a priest, I would still be in church on Sunday because I didn't get it right this week. Because I need to be a person who is formed in the habit of gathering with my fellow Christians and faithfully worshiping God. And so this is who we are as a people. We gather and we faithfully worship God. And we live in a dry land. We have this pandemic, we have wildfires. Today is going to be ridiculously hot. Uh, It might uh, contribute to more wildfires. Our land is literally burning. And we're in the midst of a dry land. And when we don't know what to do about that, we can use it to become a people that brings our dryness to God. We also live in a dry land when it comes to justice. Uh, I think of that beautiful Bible verse that was often quoted by Martin Luther King Jr., where he said, let justice roll down like mighty waters and mercy like an ever-flowing stream. And I can't imagine where there would be more appropriate and necessary than such a dry land that is literally on fire. 
And this week, when it comes to justice, we saw that uh, Breonna Taylor didn't get any justice. And the one officer that was charged in her case was actually charged for the bullets that missed her and damaged property. The bullets that hit her, they didn't have a problem with, the Justice Department didn't have a problem with, but the bullets that missed her endangered property. And we live in a dry land that seems to worship property and care about property more than the lives of black women. And so in the midst of this dry land, we become a people perpetually clinging to Jesus. When this pandemic first hit, I started emailing the church some prayers. I started preaching about uh, practices and habits we could get in where we could um, journal, read a chapter of Proverbs every day, read the Bible, say your prayers, journal, uh, do all these because I was trying to give us tools to be a people that would cling to Jesus. And that cling to Jesus is a constant state of being. It's not like you can do it one day. And you're like, all right, I did it. I clung to Jesus for a day. Cross that off the list. See you guys later. Everything's fine. It's like, no, no, no. In the midst of this crazy pandemic that's gone on a lot longer than any of us hoped or imagined, uh, with the, the dry land on fire, and with our people just thirsting for justice, the best thing we can do is to be a people growing, to be a people seeing God, be a people bringing our thirst to God, and in the process becoming a people that constantly clings to Jesus through good times and bad. Uh, I loved the appropriateness of the hymn Ben played so beautifully before the sermon, abide in, abide with me, because that abide verb is not a one and done. That abide verb is a constant state of being. And I love uh, some of the verses, I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine, and I would add dryness and thirst. Lord, abide with me and with us. Amen.